Hello, this is Peter Hall. My name is Josh Hall, and uh, we're the Media Maniacs because we'll review anything, anything under the sun. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the Smurfs. My brother loves the Smurfs. I hate the Smurfs. Yeah, and uh, we're, we're going to be talking about the, the critical reaction to the Smurfs and uh, why so many people seem to hate the Sony Smurf movies. Right now, we're doing the first Smurf movie. Um, the video sources, the, the, um, mostly what we're using is video clips from the Nostalgia Critics review of the Smurf film. He and the um, Black, um, he and Andre the Black Nerd did a crossover where they talked about the um, first Sony Smurf film. So we're doing uh, a commentary on that mostly. So uh, sit back and watch. Here it is. The Belgian comic turned into an American 80s cartoon has finally hit the big screen. Well, technically the second time. Fucking liars. Like most 80s cartoons, it banked more on selling merchandise rather than focusing on interesting stories. You take that back! Nana! Please? It was mostly harmless. So much so that I'm not entirely sure how you could get that much of a movie out of it. At least, without being super creative. Well, that's exactly what they did. At first. Rumor has it Paramount originally owned the rights to the movie and were looking to make it sort of a comedic epic fantasy. Think Lord of the Rings meets Princess Bride. Well, that doesn't sound too bad. Until Sony got the rights to the movie, saw Alvin and the Chipmunks with a big hit and said, hey, we could do that, just make them blue. So, wait, they're just ripping off that terrible Chipmunks movie? No! Oh, thank God. <laughs> They're ripping off the Chipmunks movie, but they're also ripping off Enchanted, and Fat Albert, and Masters of the Universe. All that's missing is the crowding turd. <gasps> no Black Nerd! Not Roger Gasnell! He's the cinematic equivalent of child syphilis! <laughs> You fool! What have you done? Yes, my satanic setup! Let the world see you for the abomination that you are! Would you like to buy some Smurf merchandise? Evil takes many forms. This is a Smurfs movie. I'll take two. Come on, critic! How can you got? How can you and Andre say that the uh, Smurfs movie ripped off the Chipmunks, ripped off Enchanted, ripped off Fat Albert, and ripped off He-Man: Masters of the Universe? Each of those movies are their own separate entities, based off a popular comic or uh, a popular cartoon or a comic strip. Okay, the Smurfs did not rip off anything. That doesn't mean they're not. That doesn't mean Smurfs 1 and 2 are bad movie, aren't bad movies, though. They are. Also, um, as far as, like, um, mer merchandising goes, come on, Critic, what do you expect? I mean, Master Yogurt from Spaceballs had it right. There's always going to be merchandising in movies. Whether or not you buy the merchandise associated with the movie is up to you. I mean... I'm a serious movie file, cinema file, and I don't buy, and most of the time I just flat out ignore the merchandise associated with my favorite movies. Go ahead. I don't have a problem with product placement for the most part, but like, what the, the, the nostalgia critics complaints against the product placement was valid. It seems like they sacrificed the story and the Smurfs to um, focus on the products in their movie. The product placement was just fine. I mean, it wasn't... I mean, yeah, it was there, but it was fast-paced. Like, you barely noticed it if you weren't paying attention. Oh, I noticed it whenever um, Neil Patrick Harris is on set. He's an ad executive, so what? <sighs> In this version, he wants the Smurfs' essence to increase his magic, not to make gold or eat them. And as you can see, he's not very good at it as he spends most of his time playing with puppets rather than getting any real work done. Hey, at least they look more real than the actual Smurfs. Well, any kid's film that opens with cat balls on a beloved character's head is certainly setting the bar pretty high. I can't understand how you can compare, how you can say that the puppets that the Smurfs Gargamel was playing with look more <laughs> realistic than the CGI Smurfs in the movie. That's just ridiculous. 
I kind of thought the CGI looked great, even if I thought the story was stupid. All right. Sheesh, nostalgia critic. Come on, critic. You can't make, you can't really complain about that. The movie was rated PG. We had to expect some crude humor. What do you think about that, Josh? Eh, didn't really add anything. It was kind of stupid. Papa Smurf, voiced by Jonathan Winters, has a vision of all the Smurfs being destroyed because of a mistake Clumsy made, never realizing that maybe he made that mistake because you named them Clumsy. Clumsy? Yeah, it's like naming your daughter prostitute. Are you really encouraging any great things labeling them that? Come on, guys, that criticism about the Smurfs um, being named after their uh, dominant personality trait isn't valid. I mean, that's been present in like the earliest Peo comic strip cartoons. It was present in the Hanna-Barbera cartoon in the 80s. So really, you're not just criticizing the movie, you're criticizing the entire Smurfs franchise. I think that they should have just left New York and the human cast out and stuck with the Smurf cast. So Gargamel finally figures out that the Smurfs have kept hidden because of an invisible force field. I guess we've gone from children's fantasy to Star Trek technology. But some of them stumble across a magic portal. Don't act like you haven't. Where Gargamel has them trapped. Looks like you got the short end of the stick, eh, Papa? Not this time, Gargamel. I much rather sacrifice my life than listen to your heinous performance! Must have Because it makes much more sense to chase six Smurfs as opposed to 94. I don't think we're in Smurf Village anymore. This leads them to where every fucking portal in family films leads to... New, New York, York City. City! Preferably the very pretty and or intimidating part. Oh, hey, can we get the photographer over there? There's big arrivals happening. Thanks. Welcome. Uh, why are we suddenly in an episode of How I Met Your Mother? Oh, don't you know? This is Neil Patrick Harris's movie now. What? I thought this was about Smurfs. Well, critic, like most sellout adaptations, the title character rarely has anything to do with the title itself. So, instead of being about little blue people... It's about an advertising VP coming to grips with becoming a father. So, we're in a romantic comedy that just happens to have Smurfs. Yep. That's like having a Holocaust film that suddenly decided it needs Fraggles. That comes out next week. I hear Oscar buzz. Until we rescue Crumsey. I actually like the plot regarding um, revolving around Neil Patrick Harris's character and his wife. Um, I like this movie because the Smurfs help the human characters. They help um, Patrick Winslow, Neil Patrick Harris's character. They help him. <laughs> they help him. Um, what kind of a name is that? Shut up. They help his character with his job and his advertising uh, executive capacity. And they help him keep his job and then he helps him get back home. I actually like that aspect of the movie. And just when you're wondering if watching a cat vomit would be more fun than watching this movie, the film decides to answer for you. <laughs> Infinitely more fun. Yes. It's like the Disney world of fun in this movie. Cat vomit! Tawny locks of Smurfette. Oh. Oh, sweet follicular ambrosia. Am I the only one getting a bald Mo Sislak from an unfunny version of The Simpsons? So The Simpsons now. A pie. Oh, I must find the laboratory. This should do nicely. Ah! <laughs> Somebody's been working in dark and terrible magic in there. Is it even worth wasting a joke on that no, one? No, move on. While he tries... I actually thought that scene with uh, Gargamel um, mistaking a porta party for a, a laboratory was pretty funny. And actually, his cat vomiting up, um, his cat uh, doing that um, vomit scene was important to the plot because that cat had um, a, a whole bunch of strands of uh, Smurf Set's hair. At straws. And uh, Gargamel was going to use that to get get essence, so that was important to the plot. That was gross. You're grasping at. Okay, my brother likes the part where like um, Gargamel's cat Azrael vomits up Smurfette's hair because it's important to the part, and he likes the part where like they go into a porta party. It was funny. Yeah, the porta party. Yeah. Anyway, am I the only one who thinks that? That's the first time that, like, a furball was relevant to the plot. That's pretty lame.
have to figure out how to get the magic out of her hair, Neil Patrick Harris visits his pregnant beard while the Smurfs try to break in. And this partakes in what I'm noticing more and more in bad family films, especially in Raja Gosnell's films, movement pool. What, you're anti-movement? No, I'm anti-lazy movement. Movement that only exists just to hypnotize your kids rather than engage them. Engaging movement involves a lot of variety. Sharp stops, varying speeds, unexpected turns. This is what makes good visual storytelling. Here, everything is at the same speed, the same pacing, and the same kind of movement. There's no variation, so there's nothing interesting about it. What's more engaging, watching Mario go one speed throughout the entire game, or having him stop, slow down, go backwards, stomp on things? This safe, boring, and repetitive movement is the same as looking at a watch waving back and forth. They're both trying to hypnotize and relax you so that you don't think about what you're watching. And that's not what a movie is supposed to do. You're supposed to think about it. You're supposed to be sucked in. But this method is an ingenious way to numb your brains without feeling bored. So you think it must be doing something right when really it's just junk food for your mind. And it's all over the movie. Okay, um, I actually have no problem with the uh, pacing of the movie. The uh, physical comedy scenes in Slapstick <gasps> are pretty funny. Um, I actually found the Smurfs um, and their uh, misadventures in, the me in New York to be uh, very engaging. I don't know why you didn't, uh, Nostalgia Critic, and I don't know why anybody else didn't either, but I did. He gave plenty of good reasons why he thought... Yeah, that. he gave reasons, I just don't agree with them. Yeah, whatever. I thought that all the movement was at the same pace, and there's a difference between film pacing and comedic pacing yeah whatever also you really can't compare that to uh, Mario playing Mario is very different than watching a film sorry nostalgia critic that comparison doesn't work the smurf spot talent and decide to attack him Run! honey help I think they're gonna do me in the smurf do not be fooled by their cuteness <laughs> so he's told who the smurfs are and big surprise he finds it all kinds of confusing <laughs> They're little blue people. So you're sticking with your this is actually happening theory? That's actually a legit question. I always had a theory that all of this movie was just a continuation of its drug high from Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. No, not even a drug person would go this far without squashing them. You wanna get high? Yeah. Hear that, honey? They're only staying till an actual blue moon rises. Which could happen if the little blue Santa man makes a magic potion, which at this point seems completely plausible. <laughs> I don't think that was in the script. I think Harris was just clarifying how horribly written this movie is. And you're all named after your personalities? Do you get your names when you're born or after you've exhibited certain traits? Yeah. Yep. Oh, I see. So Clumsy has the personality trait of being clumsy, Grouchy has the personality trait of being grouchy, and Smurfette has the personality trait of... Girl! Girl, as we all know, girls just have one personality trait. Says so much about her. Yeah. I get Nostalgia Critic and Andre the Black Nerd. You guys are criticizing the entire Smurfs franchise, not just that movie. The Smurfs have always been named that way. Yes, but why did the Smurfs answer yes to Neil Patrick Harris's questions? He asked, It's they called a their... mathematician's answer. It means giving an answer that's technically correct, but it it's not really helpful or mean, doesn't really mean anything. It's pointless. He asked them if they got their names after they were born or if they got their names after exhibiting certain traits when they were older. And they answered yes to both. What's the point? <laughs> For comedy. Like most of Harris's performance, he acts like he wants to get out of every scene as quickly as possible. I had a crazy morning. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, nothing. I'm just, I'm excited. So tell me, Patrick, is that a smurf in your pocket? Are you just happy to see me? I need to hone my message here. Oh, how about grab life by the great? Have a Smurfy day. I kissed a Smurf and I liked it. Get it? La, 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 la. Stop! <laughs> Come on, none of you find that song just the tiniest bit annoying. I find it annoying. Come on, Nostalgia Critic and, Black, and Andre the Black Nerd. The fact that this movie makes fun of itself is why I like it so much. It makes fun of itself just just because it knows that the audience is gonna make fun of it, fun of it. So they're beating them to the punch. I find that endearing. 
uses a smurf hair to make his magic better, catching the eye of Harris's boss, played by Sofia Vergara. Thank the gods that chamber fought. <laughs> Oh my god. This is really happening, people. What do we do? Just look away. I can't, it's too awful. Just close your eyes and imagine why your kindergarten favorites is not pissing into a bucket. Is it working for you? Pale is rolling in his grave. Me neither. There's only one alternative. Boy, <sighs> it's so much better for some reason. Yeah, me too. But I feel like we're missing part of the movie. Oh, you're right, you're right. Let's rewind that and see what we missed. <laughs> The Smurfs end up in a toy store where, of course, all sorts of misunderstandings take place. I'm just tired of the whole dating game. Just say who you are and be who you say. Okay, first, that looks nothing like a Smurf. Second, it's not even blue. Third, does he really not know it's a pillow? He has to know it's a pillow. I mean, is that something the Smurfs don't know? They just don't know what pillows are? They have to have pillows. Their hats are kind of like pillows. I mean, for the love of God, how is this scene even remotely possible? Really? Who gives a shit? Ah, <sighs> thank you, 1998 Jennifer Lopez. You're right. The more I question it, the more it shows I care. Oh! <laughs> the scene where Grouchy is ha trying to have a romantic conversation with that green M&M, um, plush toy was funny. I mean, that didn't bother me at all. It, it was funny that, um, Grouchy, um, demonstrated a softer, more sensitive side to himself. I thought he was trying to get therapy. No, he was trying to hit on her. But he didn't know that she wasn't alive. That's why he said, Come on, talk to me, say something, I'm dying here! He was trying to hit on her, but didn't know that she wasn't alive. I hate the Smurfs. Gargamel tries to catch them, but then ends up getting tased. Now, that has to be funny. Gargamel getting tased, good god. How can a movie possibly screw this up? Get away. Like that. You couldn't even make Gargamel getting tased funny. He sounds like Professor Fink getting jerked off. Ugh, I don't think we need that image. No, I don't think so either. <sighs> Much better. Oh, but I feel like we missed part of the movie. Now here's something that we can both agree on. Gargamel getting tased was funny. I don't know why you had a problem with it, Nostalgia Critic and Andre the Black like Nerd. I when he was doing his puppet show. <laughs> yeah, well, that was a, towards the beginning of the movie. You left that out. Yeah, whatever. Here you go. Hey, everyone. I do have to agree with the Nostalgia Critic and Andre the Black Nerd. Me and my brother both liked the scene where, like, um, Gargamel gets tased. But I kind of agree with them that it sounded like Professor Fink getting jerked off. <laughs> In their spare time, Smurfette reveals her troubled past. I was created by Gargamel to trap the other Smurfs. And then what happened? Papa saved me. He cast a special spell and then helped me become the Smurf I was meant to be. Oh, so much for her backstory. Yeah, who cares? We have Harris's advertising job to worry about. It's not like this movie is about Smurfs. Time to either celebrate or file for unemployment. <laughs> I think that was the banner at the movie's rap party. But we don't need to worry about that for too long as we partake in more movement porn, which also conveniently serves as trailer fodder. And product placement for Guitar Hero and or Rock Band. Hello, this is Peter Hall. My name is Josh Hall, and uh, we're the Media Maniacs because we'll review anything, anything under the sun. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the Smurfs. My brother loves the Smurfs, I hate the Smurfs. Yeah, and uh, we're, we're going to be talking about the, the critical reaction to the Smurfs and uh, why so many people seem to hate the Sony Smurf movies. Right now, we're doing the first Smurf movie. Um, the video sources, the, the, um, mostly what we're using is video clips from the Nostalgia Critics review of the Smurf film. He and the um, black... Um, he and Andre the Black Nerd did a crossover where they talked about the um, first Sony Smurfs film. So we're doing uh, a commentary on that mostly. So uh, sit back and watch. Here it is. The Belgian comic turned into an American 80s cartoon has finally hit the big screen. Well, technically the second time. Fucking liars. Like most 80s cartoons, it banked more on selling merchandise rather than focusing on interesting stories. You take that back! Never! Please? It was mostly harmless. 
So much so that I'm not entirely sure how you could get that much of a movie out of it. At least, without being super creative. Well, that's exactly what they did, at first. Rumor has it Paramount originally owned the rights to the movie and were looking to make it sort of a comedic epic fantasy. Think Lord of the Rings meets Princess Bride. Well, that doesn't sound too bad. Until Sony got the rights to the movie, saw Alvin and the Chipmunks with a big hit and said, hey, we could do that, just make them blue. So, wait, they're just ripping off that terrible Chipmunks movie? No! Oh, thank God. <laughs> They're ripping off the Chipmunks movie, but they're also ripping off Enchanted, and Fat Albert, and Masters of the Universe. All that's missing is the crowding turd. <gasps> no Black Nerd, not Roger Gasnell! He's the cinematic equivalent of child syphilis! <laughs> You fool! What have you done? Yes, my satanic setup! Let the world see you for the abomination that you are! Would you like to buy some Smurf merchandise? Evil takes many forms. This is a Smurfs movie. I'll take two. Come on, critic! How can you got how can you and Andre say that the uh, Smurfs movie ripped off the Chipmunks, ripped off Enchanted, ripped off Fat Albert, and ripped off He-Man Masters of the Universe? Each of those movies are their own separate entities based off a popular comic or uh, a popular cartoon or a comic strip. Okay? The Smurfs did not rip off anything. That doesn't mean they're not that doesn't mean Smurfs 1 and 2 are bad movie, aren't bad movies, though. They are. Also, um, as far as, like, um, mer merchandising goes, come on, Critic, what do you expect? I mean, Master Yogurt from Spaceballs had it right. There's always going to be merchandising in movies. Whether or not you buy the merchandise associated with the movie is up. Of all the people on the planet, those magical little creatures came to us. They chose us. Don't you see how absolutely amazing that is? This is a once in a lifetime thing, Patrick. This is our blue moon. Hmm. You know, it's amazing. You are 100% wrong. I mean, nothing you've said has been right. Yeah, Kermit's right. Nobody chose anybody. Yeah, it's clearly just a series of accidental circumstances. I'll give it this, though. It does make me crave Blue Moon. Let's go drinking after this. I think that was a given. But thankfully... T okay, so just because the Smurfs didn't mean to um, collide with um, Neil Patrick Harris and his wife in the movie doesn't mean that they didn't choose to help them out afterwards. The Smurfs ended up helping out Patrick Winslow and his advertising career, and Patrick Winslow and his wife ended up helping the Smurfs get back home. Yeah, but the wife's comment about the Smurfs choosing them was kind of stupid. It was not. The Nostalgia Critic and Andre the Black Nerd were correct. Nobody chose anyone. The Smurfs chose to help them out afterwards. That's choosing. And Square is full of ironic imagery, and he realizes that hammered in messages are good. Meanwhile, at an old bookstore, the Smurfs are looking for a book of spells, which seems to be, weirdly enough, a Smurfs comic book. The secret runes are hidden in the drawing. You see all that in there? Look here at the patterns on this page. So wait, Pale wasn't just a cartoonist, he was also a dimension jumper? Or was he a time traveler? Didn't this all take place in the past? Kinda? And upon his discoveries, all he did was make cartoons about it? I never thought I'd say this, but Smurfs, you're kind of hard to follow. Oh, okay. come on, Critic. I actually like the fact that they gave a shout out to the original Payo comics. I mean, yeah, there is a minor plot hole in the fact that the Smurfs don't know who Payo is, and the fact that he was able to document them without them having any knowledge about him until now doesn't really make any sense, but whatever, I can overlook it. Why can't you? The meta humor is fine, but it doesn't save the movie. What are you talking about? Sheesh. <laughs> Argamel tries again to capture them, but Papa Smurf stays behind to get captured. Why? He could have just escaped with them. Well, then it wouldn't feed into the Papa Sacrifice-y talk that they had earlier. 
That doesn't mean you get purposely caught for no reason. Doesn't it, Black Nerd? Doesn't it? No! Well, the director of Beverly Hills Chihuahua says it does, so shut it! Have you seen Beverly Hills Chihuahua? No, have you? You are part of the problem. But they get the portal to open up and bring tons of Smurfs back to save Papa. Yeah, that doesn't really work as a war song. It sounds more like a lullaby from Donald Trump. Hmm. An angry horde of people holding weapons, chanting, and wearing pointy white hats. For some reason, I feel very uncomfortable. What? Comparing the Smurfs to the KKK, are you serious? You got anything <laughs> to say? Only that, even though I agree with them about sharing a common hatred for this movie, it's kind of stupid to find racist overtones. <laughs> Whatever, I guess I can accept that. <laughs> That's going on, Papa Smurf is being put through a machine to extract his essence. <laughs> no. Onions! Was that a Smurf thing? Being afraid of onions? No. Was there an episode where an onion killed his family? No. Could the onion- No! Then why the fuck is he afraid of onions? I don't know. Indiana Jones is afraid of snakes. But not produce! There's not a scene in one of the movies where he's like, Onions. Why did it have to be onions? So let's just agree that the writers were probably on meth when they wrote this. There's no probably about it. Blue meth. Blue meth. Wanna get high? Yes. Oh, but here- I am to um, Breaking Bad, by the way. Yeah, I guess I'll give you guys that. <laughs> but come on. He wasn't afraid of the onions. The onion- Onions make people cry. Gargamel was using the onions to make Papa Smurfs cry so that he could use his tears to harvest his essence. That's actually something that the original Gargamel in the cartoon would do. Yeah, well in the cartoon, Gargamel either wanted to eat the Smurfs or turn them into gold. Here he wants to harvest their essence for their magic. Why did he want to eat them? That's just in the cartoon, I don't know. As much as I hate this movie, Gargamel wanting to harvest the Smurfs' essence to power his magic kind of makes sense. More so than turning them into gold or eating them. Yep. Something neat, we get to see how Azrael gets the chipped ear! But... Wait, if this happened after the cartoon, shouldn't there already be a chipped ear? Come on guys, complaining about Azriel getting his getting a, a, his a ear kind of broken was, uh, that's just nitpicking. I mean, who really cares? So he got his ear chipped in the movie rather than in the cartoon when he should have already had it. Big deal. Nitpicking! I kind of, let me say something, kind of agree with my brother. <laughs> It makes as much sense as Smurfette saving Papa Smurf only to immediately have him captured again. Price, this guy throws himself into trouble more than Bella Swan! Gotcha. Oh, I got it! But Clumsy is about to perform the action that Papa Smurf saw would doom them all. Visions never been wrong. Except when they're completely wrong. Like this time. Just put that in the bag of other plot holes this movie doesn't explain. <sighs> really? It's getting so big! I owe you an apology, Clumsy. I believe more in a vision than I did in you. From now on, you shall be called semi-competent Smurf. This leads to the Smurfs finally being sent home. I should get going. I've got a Smurf village to rebuild. Your village has given me some ideas. We're thinking about putting our garbage on the street and acting like assholes to anyone who looks at us funny. I Smurf you. Really? Who gives a shit? So that was the Smurfs movie. But only by title. This has so little to do with the original cartoon. Believe it or not, in 2017, they're rebooting the Smurfs again, fully animated and more like the source material, which makes perfect sense, because this movie has nothing to do with the original Smurfs. Look, you can do that with Garfield, you can do it with the chipmunks, but the Smurfs live in a medieval fantasy world with dragons, with wizards, with witches, with magic, with sorcery, with adventure, and you decided it was more entertaining to have 
advertising executives, domestic parenting, New York City, Sony product placement. That is not what the Smurf stood for. It was magical, it was timeless, and you made it 2000s. And yet, it was such a big hit. Why? I'll tell you why. Because they threw a lot of money and advertising at it with no effort. People forget how all over the place the Smurfs were. It was a marketing monster that couldn't be escaped. It grabbed older people's nostalgia, younger kids' love for toys, and enough celebrities to have people shrug and be way too forgiving because of how cute it was. So wait, you're saying you can make a bundle through no effort at all as long as you just advertise it right? Pretty much. All you need is something nostalgic, celebrities, and someone who's manipulated people through Okay, first of all, I don't see how you can complain about uh, movie marketing itself because that's what movies are supposed to do. If they don't market themselves, how are people going to know about them? And as I said earlier, the merchandise associated with a film, you can choose to take it or leave it. So a film marketing itself doesn't bother me. Um, <laughs> also, um, you might not like what they did with the Smurfs, but a lot of effort did go into that movie, and I actually like the Smurf live-action films. I like the first one, I like the second one, and I, as much as I like the lo as much as I love the Lost Village, I kind of wish that they had made a third live-action Smurfs movie. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. Coming this fall to a theater near you, Pet Rock. It's your childhood favorite like you've never seen it before. It jumps around to pop songs, looks cute, raps in the corner, alters some white idiot's life, and all while having a ton of celebrity voices. You remember these people age group 5 to 37, don't you? It's Amy Poehler. Waffles! Christopher Walken. Call me Chris. Chris Rock. Selena Gomez. The Rock wants what it wants. Hey, she said the thing. And of course, Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, I'm in everything, so why not be in this, motherfucker? But you don't want a movie called The Pet Rock to be about the pet rock. So we have several characters to derail the plot, like Neil Patrick Harris as the ad executive, Megan Fox as April O'Neil, Shia LaBeouf from Transformers. Do it! All right, jeez. They're just about to ride with Natalie Portman and Courtney Cox in a pink convertible with He-Man and Thor in the back seat, with a soundtrack featuring the Rolling Stones. Kid Rock, and other rock-related names. You know it must be good. It's on fucking everything. Pet Rock the Movie. It'll turn your heart of stone into a heart of home. Coming out the same weekend as... Son of a... Your gag at the end about the Pet Rock movie was funny, but... Seriously, you can't compare that... the Something as stupid as the Pet Rock to the Smurfs movie franchise. That's just ridiculous, Nostalgia Critic. <laughs> anyway, um, my brother and I, we generally, we, we love your video reviews and we generally agree with most of them. There's a few that we don't agree with and the Smurf movies are one that I totally disagree with you on. He agrees with you, but I don't. So, anyway, well, there's that.